see many marriages fail because of this people are in church never developing any character that looks like christ but they have characters that look like their grandmothers and look like their fathers and look like some celebrity see and all of that if you heard what i'm saying shout glory Glory. is that true is that true Is that true? And so it's important that we train ourselves, we develop ourselves, we do things that look, we, we want to look like Christ. The, the scripture says that we are the light of the world. We want to demonstrate light. You see? We want to demonstrate light. Not be the light of the world, yet walk in darkness. You are the light. You say, I'm the light. light. Then you are walking in darkness. He wants us to train ourselves like that. You heard that shout glory. Glory. I think I I, I have a message on the the prosperity of the soul when I started talking about some of those things many years ago. Amen. Your ability to hold yourself is a fruit of the spirit. Are we, are, we, are we learning on the fruit of the Spirit? Yes, are we learning on the fruit of the Spirit? Yes, in our studies, guys, the foundational school. It's a fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit is so important. That is, when it talks about the fruit of the Spirit, it's telling us, you see, how do we know a tree? By its fruit. How do we know you're a Christian? By the fruit you bear. And Jesus tells us to bear fruit. So when he's talk, talking about as the fruit of the human spirit, You are born again. Wednesday, we said you are the new man. So what fruit are you bringing out? Are you birthing out as the new man? As the newly created person? As a person who is born again? That's what it means when you talk about the fruit of the spirit. And it talks about love. It talks about patience. Patience. And all the others that I think you guys will be going to, is that not powerful? I said, is that not powerful? So there are four important things I want us to look at concerning our tongue. Now, our tongue is a very important tool in our lives. Our tongue. Say our tongue. Our tongue. It's so important. It's an important tool. It's a very important tool. Very important tool. And our words matter to God. Why? Because we are not ordinary. We are anointed people. Say, I'm anointed. anointed. It means that we have been enabled supernaturally. We have supernatural enablement. It means that we've been empowered through the Holy Spirit. So, the way we use our tongue or what we, we, we use our tongue for is very important to God. What we say is important to God. Our words are instruments of change. Our words are instruments of change. Our words are instruments of creation. Are you writing something down? Yes, sir. Our words are instruments of change. Can you can you change this? Can you can you take this lady there and bring this lady here? Let her go here and let anybody there come to the side. You understand? Our words are instruments of change. Amen. Amen. Our words are instruments of change. And our words are instruments of creation. If you hear that shout, glory. glory. Amen. Amen. Did you hear what I said? Have you written it down? So, God wants us to place value on our words and make use of that faculty that is given to us in the human body called the tongue. Make good use of it. So our tongue is not just for tasting things. 
naturally, and when you are going to school and all that, when we say the five senses, is that not true? You say, what is the use of the tongue? Well, I should ask that in a classroom anywhere, all the kids, I call them and I do say, it's for tasting things. Because that's what the world teaches us. Is that true? But the word of God teaches us the proper usage of the tongue. How to put good use. See, how to make good use of your tongue. And place value on your words. If you heard that shout glory. glory. The scripture says, by your words you shall be condemned. And by your words you shall be justified. By your words you shall be condemned. By your words you shall be justified. So, we put words to work to get born again. Is that true? You can't be born again in your mind. Say, be born again. Say, the scripture says that with the heart, man believes. It says with the mouth, confession is what? It's made. So it's either you choose to make a confession of the Lordship of Jesus, or you choose not to. If you choose to, you are justified. If you choose not to, you are condemned. Meaning that the distinction is just in the tongue. <laughs> is that not powerful? Very powerful sir. Believing with your heart alone is not enough. You believe with your heart unto righteousness. They say, but with the mouth, confession is made. So if you say, I believe with my heart, and you never make a confession, you can be saved. A proclamation. You can be saved. And it takes a tongue to do that. Is that not true? And that's how important our words are. So it's important that we put value on our words. Amen. Amen. And we train ourselves to do that. We train ourselves to do that. Whatever, as anointed as you are, Whatever you say over and over again will come to pass. Why? Because what you say over and over is already established in the spirit realm. Right? That's very important. What you say over and over is already established in the spirit realm. It's established. And I will, I will take you into certain scriptures right now. Are you writing something down? It's very important. It's very important. It's very important. It's very important. Are we being cleansed this morning? Yes, sir. So it's important when you let loose of your tongue in the wrong way, you have to correct it. These are things we don't take very serious. You know that? We don't take those things very serious. We don't. We take prayers very serious. As powerful as prayer is, if your confessions are wrong, all your prayers that you pray and all that never produce results. Because when, when, when you pray and you make wrong confessions, you repudiate what you have prayed for. There are people who pray, have received the fruit of them as they are going. They are saying, ah, this doctor's report. I don't even know how it will change. So, which, where are you standing? That means that where is your spirit standing? Where is your mind standing? You are, you are a person in the book of James. <laughs> are you a person in the book of James? Mm-hmm. But if you are like that, you are a person, I, I just want to see whether you catch, some of you here catch what I'm trying to say. In the book of James, who can tell me what I'm trying to talk about? <laughs> <laughs> you can tell me what I'm talking about by the book of James. Okay, but I've read. Just sit down, don't worry. Hmm. A double minded person receives nothing from the Lord. Is that not what it says? A double minded person receives nothing. Is that what it says? Did I say that? 
So a double-minded person receives nothing from the Lord. A double-minded person receives nothing from the Lord. A double-minded person. So you prayed, and we even prayed and prophesied. But the next morning, what you said was against what we prayed to you to receive, prayed for you to receive. Is that not double-mindedness? Yes, so, it's so important that I think sometimes we think it's a demon that has stopped our prayers or something. And I've said the demon don't stop our prayers. It's us who stop the prayers from functioning. As effective as prayer is, we, we, we cut through the prayers with a sword. <laughs> Shout glory. So I want us to look at four important things just for about 20 minutes and I think that we'll be done with our conversation. Amen. Are we having a conversation? Are you enjoying the conversation? Or you want us to talk about the Holy Spirit? And talk about how you receive... Uh, is that not powerful? Is that not powerful? Everybody is looking at me. Is that not true? Some of you, I'm writing your names down. That's what I'm doing now. Shout glory. Glory. Say, I'm not double-minded. I'm not double-minded. Say, I'm not double-minded. I'm not double-minded. Are you here? So important. So, number one, I said we are talking about what? I said we are talking about what? So, number one, we speak to God. We speak to God. We speak to God. We are tonguing to God. Is that not true? We speak to God. Number two. Number two. We speak to ourselves. We speak to ourselves. Number three. We speak to things. We speak to things. We speak to things. Number four. We speak to others. We speak to others. We speak to others. Shout glory. glory. Have you gotten it down? Yes, Have you gotten it down? Yes, Have you gotten it down? Yes, sir. All four. So let's go to we, we speak to God. So it's so important. It means that we are using we use our tongue to speak to God. Is that true? Yes, First Corinthians. Chapter fourteen. We speak to God. Say, I speak to God. Christianity is a fellowship. Have I said it every time? Christianity is you, after you are born again and you are in Christ Jesus, and Christ is in you, you have to cultivate that culture of having conversations with God. You have to cultivate that culture of having conversations with God. Every Christian should have conversations with God. 
every Christian. Every Christian should have, should be able to communicate to God. Every Christian. And not only communicate to God, but also have God communicate to him. So, as Christians, we speak to God. One way we speak to God is by speaking in tongues. Is that not true? I said, is that not true? I said, is that not true? So, we speak to God when we speak in tongues. And tongues speaking is the right way to pray. Tongue speaking, I know you are writing things down. Is that not true? Yes, sir. The right way to pray. You also speak to God in your understanding. That means that in your own earthly language. So when we speak in tongues, we are speaking a heavenly language. When we speak in tongues, we are speaking a heavenly language. I'll leave that to the foundational school. Is that not true? And there are a lot of benefits that come with that. Is that not true? So there are a lot of benefits that come with that. You know, your Christian journey cannot be enlivened if you don't speak, if you don't speak to God. Many Christians who practice Christianity as religion if you talk to them, you know they, they are born again, but you, you see that there is no practical relation where they are relating with God practically. So they treat Christianity as a religion. And it's amazing that about 80% of Christians are like that. So anyone who thinks church is about what you can get from God is a religious Christian. Write that down. And, and put it on your status to, so that your friends who are not WCM members will know. Is that not true? Anyone, I said what? Anyone who thinks that church is what? Is it church? <laughs> Anyone who thinks that Christianity is what? Is getting something from God is what? It's a religious Christian. The Christians, that's how many Christians, about 80 or 95 percent, just think that the reason why they are Christians is for them to receive something from God. So if that thing has not yet been received, that package has not yet come, they are still saying, God, when will you make the package come? You see. If you are like that, you are a traditional religion, religious person. You are, you are not different from the one who goes to the native doctor. Who only goes because he's going to seek some intervention? Are you different from such a person? You can't stay in that shrine and be relating with that idol. It's only the priest or whoever is there that relates with the demons, you see, over there. Idol worship is the worship of evil spirits. You know what I said? The worship of, of evil spirits. So anyone who goes there like that will just go to see somebody and the person will talk to the evil spirit. The evil spirit will talk back and then you go home. Then after a month, you go back with a goat. You see. Is that not what they do? Yes, sir. So if your Christianity is like that, then you better go and join them. Or we all go and join to go and look, see whether the goat will, will give us a a breakthrough. See, but Christianity is beyond that. Christianity is not a religion. Yes, there is a religious part of Christianity, but Christianity is not a religion. Those of you who did religion in, 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 as a social science or whatever it is in the university, you know that religion has to do with trying to relate with a supreme being somewhere. Is that not true? But that's not what we are doing in Christianity. In Christianity, we have God in us. We are not trying to reach a God. 
that we are not very sure whether he will do or he will not do. We are now trying to look. No. Did you hear what I said? Am I teaching us or I should be jumping? Am I teaching you? So what I'm telling you is that in Christianity, there should be that kind of, not just a relationship, but a practical fellowship between you and God. Now, when you speak in tongues, you are speaking directly to God. See, tongue speaking is a is direct line. It's God's direct communication line. You also speak to speak in your understanding. So Paul said, I will speak in tongues. See, and I also speak in my understanding. I will speak in my understanding also. So my understanding is the also. That's the, that's the second part. See, where we are praying, say, Father, you are worthy of our praise. Thank you for your love. So you are speaking to God. That's what I was talking of, uh, about worship. When we are worshiping the Lord, you ought to know that you are speaking to God. You ought to. Else when we are doing worship, all you just do is sing to God and sit down. Or watch us and you sit down. You see? But you should understand that kind of, how important it is. I don't know how you can live a Christian life in the midst of all the trials, in the midst of all the troubles, the tribulations, and all kinds of things you can find yourself in as you journey through in this faith and still be active as a Christian without a proper active relationship between you and God. It's not possible. At a point in time, you... You'll be a church goer. Do that. It's a, a Sunday. I have to be in church. And you go to church. You see. But if you have that relationship with God, church is everywhere. Church is everywhere. You're always talking with God on an issue. Sometimes you want to hear what He's saying before you take a step. Did you hear what I said? You are, you, are, you are talking with him. I've said it before. Prayer is not a monologue where you are only talking, one person is doing the talking. Is that prayer? But that is what we do in prayers. Prayer is not a, a monologue. It's a conversation between, it's a dialogue where you and God are, are on the talking terms. That's the greatest privilege a man can have. I didn't hear glory to that. Glory. Hey, look at some of you are even asleep already. Where have you gone to? <laughs> oh, you are in church. In church yes. Say, Papa, we are in church. We are in church. Am I showing you something? I want to I want to see church people who are who are God like. Is that not true? And who understand what they are doing. We say, Papa, God talked to me, God spoke to me about this kind of thing. You know, when you are talking with them. So, Papa, on Wednesday, I was speaking with God on an issue. So, I was saying, God, I want you to, I don't know why this thing. And he said this. And I was very shocked. Do you, do, do, do you understand what I'm saying? That's, that's true fatherhood. That's, that's a good father. It's not always come and see me for something. So you should you should be able to I want to see children like that. Amen. So this follow <laughs> follow after love and desire spiritual gifts. But rather, have I spoken something to you? Can I close with that? I just said. Can even close that? You just go and say, No, this, today you must talk to me. Holy Ghost, I must hear you speak. There are people who say I don't hear the Holy Ghost. I don't even know when the Holy Ghost speaks to uh, do you want to hear the Holy Ghost speak to you? Do you want to? Do you want to? Yes. Maybe I should do a subject on that, teaching on that. What do you guys think? To hear from the Holy Ghost. Write it down. We'll do, we'll just remind me, I'll do a topic on that. Follow after love and desire spiritual gifts. 
but rather that he may prophesy. Uh -huh. For he that speaks in an unknown tongue, or somebody say tongue, speaketh not unto men, but unto God. For no man, <laughs> for no man understands him. How be it in the spirit, he speaks mysteries. Is that powerful? For he that speaks in an unknown tongue, it's talking about when we speak in tongues. So he speaks not unto men. So when we are speaking, men are hearing the sounds. But we are not speaking to them. Did you hear what I said? We are speaking unto God. So if you speak in tongues, you are speaking to God. And it says, no man understands him. How be it in the spirit, or in the realm of the spirit, such a person is speaking mysteries. Why? Well, he's speaking things that are, he's sharing secrets. See, he's speaking things that are unknown to men. But only known to God. So when we are praying and we are speaking in tongues, we are speaking directly to God in that language that is sanctified enough. Is sanctified and and so holy enough for us to speak to him with. So tongue speaking is a holy language. It's a sanctified language. The tongues that we speak, the heavenly language, is sanctified, is holy. Well, it's given by the Spirit of God. What comes from the Spirit is holy. Is that not true? I have a message on that, on the benefits of speaking in tongues. It's holy. It's holy. And only God understands what we are saying when we speak to Him. Only God. Why? Because He's the one we are speaking to. If we speak and somebody else understands, we are not having, looking for a response from that person. But we can also speak in our, in our understanding. But He wants us to speak in tongues more than we speak in our understanding. Did you get what I said? He wants us to speak in tongues more than we speak in our understanding. Why? Because there is a limitation when you are using the human language to speak to God. You can write it down. It looks like you are looking at me. There's a limitation. There's a limitation. Say there's a limitation. The only time we are not limited in our speaking to God is when we are speaking in tongues. Amen. And that is why the gift of diverse tongues also is very important. The gift of diverse tongues. So it's a very important gift that sometimes we just throw out. Throw out, throw out we. But today we are not on giftings. But it's how be in the spirit we are speaking mysteries. So somebody says, why should I speak in a language that I don't understand? See, because it is, when you are speaking in that language, you are speaking mysteries. And you are not speaking in a language for you to understand. Why? Because you are not speaking to yourself to answer or respond to yourself by yourself. Is that not true? You are speaking to a holy God. God is so pure. God is so what? So pure. We are all very holy because of what Jesus has done. Did you hear what I said? Is that no flesh should glory in his presence. That no flesh should glory in his presence. Is that not powerful? So what glories in his presence is spirits. We are spirit beings. We are what? We are active spirit beings. There are spirit beings that are dead. Now we are active spirit beings. Why? Because we are life spirits. We have life eternal life in our spirits. So we are active. <laughs> there are certain human spirits that are not active. They are dead. You didn't hear what I said. 
Is that a teaching? Yes, sir. I said, is that a teaching? It is, sir. Shout glory. glory. So when we are speaking in tongues, our spirit is speaking. Our spirit is speaking to God through our tongue. And sometimes too, we may not be speaking in tongues. See, but you, we also talk to God in the spirit without speaking in tongues. We speak, we speak to God how? In the spirit. <laughs> Come on, shout glory. glory. We speak to God in the spirit. John says, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. So sometimes you are in the spirit. Where you experience the active presence of the Holy Ghost. And you begin to talk to God. Father, I want you to talk to me about my church. About this vision. That conversation must be there. You may not necessarily say the time that you are praying, Mogolo, Golo, 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 Mogolo, Golo, Golo, Golo. But sometimes people who talk to God like that are even more productive than the mogologolo that is monologue. Because <laughs> after speaking in tongues, God responds to us. That's why I talk about the gift of diverse tongues. Sometimes God responds to us through that gift. So you find yourself beginning to speak in tongues, but this time it's a prophecy. You find yourself begin to interpret what you were speaking. For your own selves. Did you hear what I said? Is this a higher level or is it a lower level? <laughs> you see? So it's important that we learn that also. Sometimes, I don't know how to explain this to you. Amen. Amen. I don't know how to explain this to you. But at times you sit alone and you are talking with God. You can even be on your phone doing something, watching whatever you are watching and still be talking to God to the point where you just put the phone down quickly because you see God responding. It's another side of our work with the Spirit. I say it every time that, I was saying it recently that, you know, let me not go into that. Shout glory. glory. Go to verse 3. Did you hear what I just said? The he that prophesied speaketh unto men to edification, to exhortation and comfort. Uh -huh. but he that speaketh in an unknown tongue says, edifies himself. That means that he charges himself up. Or he charges his spirit up. One of the ways to hear the Holy Ghost speak to you is to learn to charge your spirit you are not praying with some kind of problem in your mind you are praying with a with a mentality that you are talking with god that's what I'm, that's why it's making me explain this again i realize christians pray with a mentality of problem this is like i have a problem and i'm talking to god but you should pray with an understanding with this kind of understanding that I'm talking to God, not because of problem. Do you talk to your wife because of problem? No, I'm asking you, you have a friend, do you talk to your friend because of problem? <laughs> Are you hearing what I'm saying? You don't talk to her or him or your friend or a loved one because of a problem. When you pick your phone and you are calling, you want to call to talk. Most of the times, is that not true? It's not because you have a problem you are trying to now ask the person what you should do. And what, uh, what order to bath and all that. You see, you are talking to the person and you want a response from the person. You see, and that's the same thing. With regards to prayers, we have to graduate to the point where you can cast that, get, that burden upon the Lord and, and, and pray or 
or relate with God as having a communication with him. So I don't want to go into communion, Greek words, uh, 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 and all of that. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Uh, I've been teaching all of these things for years. But I just want us to, to be practical with some of these things as WCN members. See. Start it now. Start it today. Some of us are too sensual. Our senses are more active than our spirits. There are people who have been operating giftings who out there, not here, who, whose senses are more active than their spirits. The only time they are active, their spirit man is active, is when it's time to minister the gift. There are ministers like that. There are ministers like that. That's why I'm talking about a walk. You see, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to tell you. Am I telling you something? Yes, sir. We may not look very extraordinary, but we are very extraordinary. And it's not everything that we see, we say, we go in, and we talk about. It's not everything even I talk, I talk to my wife about. Even when I've seen that this is this, 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 sometimes I don't talk about it. See, for, because it's like it's normal. It's not if God, something is going to happen, good or bad, and God tells us, every time I have to be telling you that this is God's say, this. Like every day God say, God say. We are, we are close, so he talks to me. You are also close. He talks to you. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Hey. So every time he is talking to you, you must go and tell. No. Then you don't understand that friendship or that what relationship well. With God. Sometimes, God, I said it before, I said sometimes, depending on your intimacy with God, God tells you things just for you to know. Depending on your intimacy with God. Your level of intimacy. <laughs> Come on, shout glory. glory. So he says, when we speak in tongues, we charge our spirit. We do what? Charge we charge our spirit. Charge our spirit. Charge our spirit. Say it. Say, I'm charging my spirit. Charging my spirit. So your, your, your spirit becomes, becomes fired. You see? Your spirit man becomes fired. You can't, you can't, you can't. You see, I'm not trying to say you can't pray because prayer has been what? Spiritualized or misguided or in a way that when you are talking about you can't pray and your spirit is not active, you don't know how to distinguish between a kind of prayer where it's all about troubles, yet he's speaking in tongues, you see, and a kind of prayer where he's, he's, he's speaking in tongues. But with, the, with, the, with that understanding that I'm, I, today I'm talking with God. And I want to hear what the Spirit of God will tell me. I'm talking with God. See, so we have to correct. There is a time where we pray. There are different kinds of prayers. Amen. Amen. I said what? But, but if every time your prayer is because of trouble, then your Christianity will be some way. Be some way. You should pray or talk to God in prayers or in speaking in tongues, not because of trouble. Did you catch that? Yes, mm. Else you become to you become a religious Christian. So it says that he that prophesied edified the church. But he that speaks in an unknown tongue edified himself. That is to charge yourself. To do what? To charge yourself like you charge a car battery like you charge a generator or a plant or you charge your mobile phone you are charging yourself you see you are, you are causing your spirit man to be active to be alert to be in the spirit because even though we are living in the spirit we are not always practically in the spirit did you hear what i said Am I talking to you? Yes, Pastor. I'm not preaching to you. I'm talking to you. Am I preaching to you? I'm talking to you. There are some of you are picking it. You go home and practice it. So I'm talking to you. So your prayer life should be like that. That is why you pray. I'm talking to God. 
a special time. Depending on your intimacy with the Spirit, you'll be there alone where the Holy Ghost just show up. So you see the presence of God all around you. You are just there. Then you begin to talk to the Holy. You take advantage of that. Say, so Holy Ghost, my clinic. I don't know the clinic. Now it looks like all the prayers I've prayed and all that. The clinic. So what should I do? You take advantage of that. Don't be a church sitting Christian. Don't be what? A church sitting Christian. Only active when you are in church and go home. You're, you're not active. No. Do it in the house. Do it in your car. Do it in your office. Do it in your office. Do it, do it in your washroom. Sometimes even the best time to talk to God is in the washroom. At that time you've shut the door, nobody, everybody thinks that you're using the washroom. They won't come and worry you. Then you begin to talk. Anybody who is spiritual will tell you they do the same. Not because they intentionally go there to do that. But your mind, sometimes you are just, your mind is just at peace. Everything, all the disciples are out there in the living room and all on the streets there. <laughs> Come on, shout glory. So now you are taking your shout, you are talking to God. Let it be like that. If you'll be like that, shout glory. glory. But I understand what I just said, just simply like that. It looks very simple, but that's what makes Christianity Christianity. Your ability to relate with God through the Holy Spirit is what makes Christianity real Christianity different from the Muslim the Muslim is fasting they finish fasting or they will finish right now is that not true so they fast do they know they are talking to God or do they say we are talking to God or God is talking to me no but in our case as Christians God is in us. See. And we are speaking to him through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Ghost is in us. I've said it before that God is in heaven and God is on earth. Our Father is in heaven. He's extended his presence and his personality into us through the Holy Ghost. Did you hear what I said there? Or oh, I should write on the board here. But make your Christian life practical. Learn to charge your... There are some of you, I can say, you, I don't, you don't remember the last time you prayed, apart from 90 minutes with the Holy Ghost. In the, the whole week, no prayer. So you are cold. You may be very active. See, I can, I can point to... Some of you are here, I can point to all of you. Whether you are an usher, or you are a pastor's wife, or you are a leader, how cold you are. I can tell you through the Spirit that you are cold. Do you understand what I'm talking about? You, you, you know that you're nothing spiritual. You're snapping. So you, are, you are making WCN look like those churches that you just go to dress and show yourself and dance. We don't want that. Do we want that? We want a practical Christian who relates with the Holy Ghost and tells you. you see, there are people, when I meet and we are talking, we talk about what the Holy Ghost says or said or showed. See, in our prayers, not as prophets or as ministers of the gospel, but as Christians, we talk about it. You see, God even said this, this, this. This one, so God even told me there will be a famine. This one, so God even said this, this, this. It's always God talking. The office of the prophet, where the prophet is talking to you through the spirit or revealing things to you. And when you, as a Christian, you are led by the spirit. You see, the prophetic office is an office, but every Christian must be led by the spirit. You didn't hear what I said? 
So for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, since they are the sons of God. For as many of us, Nancy, are you led by the Spirit of God? For as many that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For as many that are led. So without hearing the prophet's voice, you can be led by the Spirit or you must be led by the Spirit. Why? If, because even the prophet gives you a small amount of what is going to happen. But what has happened? You did hear what I said? You must, as a Christian, be led by the Spirit yourself. That is a right that every of us have. I didn't hear hallelujah to that. Hallelujah. Is that leading of the Holy Spirit? See, sometimes that enables you to know when, where, and how. Sister Ansama, did you hear what I said? Sister Nancy, did you hear what I said? Sister Pearl, did you hear what I said? So, apart from receiving that prophetic message and all that, you need to be led by the Holy Ghost to know when, where, and how. When you are led by the Holy Ghost, and you have such a word, a word of knowledge, a word of wisdom. Sometimes, and most of the times, you are led to know how to go about it. Because if you say you go to London and the person who take you to London is some um, person or somebody or whatever, whoever the person is, and we never continue to tell you that it's Kojo Manu and all of that, and so even if you say Kojo Manu, you don't even know that Kojo Manu. You've never met him before. You don't know what you are talking about. So it takes the leading. Sometimes the way we even go about it, because the, the, the prophetic message has, has come, sometimes it's even wrong. You think you go through this channel, but that prophecy will be fulfilled through this channel. You have to know that by the leading of the Spirit. Did you get what I'm talking about? So the scripture is for as many that are led by the Spirit. One major way to have the Holy Ghost lead you is to learn to charge your spirit. To learn to charge your... That's what he's talking about. Edifying yourself. I don't want to go into that. Edify means and all. That's not what I'm talking about today. <laughs> is that not true? You can get a message or something. on what? It's on YouTube. The benefits of speaking in tongues. So maybe one day I must give hundred benefits of speaking in tongues. Amen. Amen. Now I have about seven. One day I'll just come and give about hundred. How do you know that I can give hundred right now? But, see, but what I'm saying with you is that is it clear? It's very important. Because you know, I want to just share these four things. I realized that whilst we were worshipping, that the people who are like when Paul went to Athens, and he says, you, to an, he saw an inscription to an unknown God, and said, you people worship a God that you do not know. I realized that Christians seem to worship God in a way that they do not know him. Maybe that's what has changed my message a little bit. God wants us to know him as he knows us. Did you hear what I said? God wants us to know him as he knows us. And we can only do that when we learn of him, when we relate with him. On a daily basis. 
Have I spoken enough? Come on, shout glory. glory. So bad, have you heard what I'm saying? So you can't work with me for years and not relate with the Holy Ghost. Oh. Can't speak in tongues and not relate with this. It's not about gift. It's about learning. That's what the God is talking to him. He says, God says, because it must be a desire. And all of you, pastors, it must be a desire. God is speaking to you. You are speaking not to start a prophetic church. <laughs> well, Ash, don't you desire that? Or you've been started already? Have you not started already? <laughs> but our last uh, what tie and and and, and <laughs> shed during the half night is now the news of the day <laughs> in WC. Maybe you have to put it uh, tomorrow in WC. <laughs> Shout glory, Bishop what? <laughs> Shout hallelujah. Who oh, heard what I said there? I'm taking my time with the prayer. It was very nice. In fact, I wanted to come and just borrow it. And it was very nice. But you see what I'm talking about? Very nice. If everybody is coming on set like that, it's perfect. It's perfect. If you don't have a tie, go and look for a tie. It's cute. Just buy it for the studios. Is that not true? Go and look for a suit and then buy it for the studios. So many things start that the way you present yourself now, or the way you present yourself now is the way you present yourself tomorrow. And even add value to what you started. That's, that's how it is. We are, we are dressing some way, some way. You will dress some way, some way after 50 years. Sometimes people feel that's nothing. But it is something. It's something because this your body that is there right now has been baptized into Christ. So your body now is not that your body. It's God dwelling in this body. You can't keep that body anyhow. You present it anyhow. Because you think it's, oh, it's just my body. That's God's body. God is dwelling in this body. I have to keep the body in a way and present myself in a way that you can, even through my clothes, you can see God. I didn't hear that you shout glory. Glory. So you can't just do anyhow, no, especially if you want, you want to present the gospel. And then we just do anything, any time. Any, any. No, it's not the best. Is that the best? You have to produce excellence and glory at the level you are in. If you have one shirt, iron it very nicely. And get a tie of one CD and add it to it, if there is a tie like that. He that speaks in an unknown tongue charges himself. So I'm being charged. So speak in tongues wherever you are right now. I speak in tongues. Shout glory. glory. You know, there are some of you, when you say speak in tongues, you're like this. From that, I can tell you you don't pray. <laughs> Do you know that? When you say speak in tongues, I always speak in tongues. <laughs> it's not your thing. It's not your thing. In Chile, you say, encounter. It's not, it has not become part of you. Speak in tongues and let me see. <laughs> Shout glory. So I said number two is what? Speak to yourself. So I said something I think is very important that you can talk to God in the spirit but not necessarily speaking in tongues. You can talk to God in the spirit. You should be conscious of the Holy Ghost. You should just explain that briefly. To be conscious of the presence of the Holy Spirit. In fact, in reality, when you are even speaking to God, you don't have to look up. You have to look inside. Did you hear what I said? Our Father who art in heaven is also in you. And through the Holy Ghost, what you see is connected to the Father in heaven. Why? Because even though the Holy Ghost lives in us, he is not distant from the Father. Did you catch what I said? The Holy Ghost lives in all of us. Some of you know that the Holy Ghost lives in you. And we are, we are in fact, I have a message that I, I, I wrote recently, the meat and the drink. 
That's the title of the message. <laughs> you see, we are drinking in the same spirit. That's what the Bible says. We are drinking in the same spirit. So once you are conscious of the Holy, that's why I talk sometimes about the Holy Ghost over and over because I want you to be conscious of this great person. The same way you are conscious of your name. When we have three people and we mention your name, you will know where you know it's you. You are not trying to look whether it is Kojo or, Kojo or Afia before. Is that not true? Once you say, Obed, just Obed, not even Pastor Obed, you think I'm talking to you. There may be some Obed here. But you wouldn't look back to see whether it is there is that other Obed or it is you. Maybe say, a person came to church today who said, Obed, how do we know? <laughs> but you are so conscious of your name. So when you are conscious of the Holy Spirit, at any time, you can talk to the Holy Ghost like that. See? And that has, to me, that has helped me a lot. Your conversations with the Holy Spirit has helped me a lot. You derive a lot of strength, a lot of hope, a lot of consolation, a lot of revelation from that. All of you must walk in certain levels of, of the revelations of the Spirit, the revelations of the Word. If you heard that shout, glory. glory. When I say it's so important. I know some of you have started doing a dog. Don't you do that? Pastor, I don't you do that. When you talk to God, God is talking to you. I don't you do that. See, you talk to you. They're talking, they're talking and you. They say, what is happening with this young boy? He's just talking. See, sometimes you are just sitting on the chair and you are talking. And they are like, who are you talking to? See. That's what makes you spiritual. Your ability to talk to an invisible person makes you spiritual. <laughs> oh, is that not true? They can't see the person, but you are talking. It's, you are talking to an invisible being who is not around you, but is living in you. Sometimes you are talking to angels. They, are talk to, they say, you go. You will talk tomorrow morning. <laughs> Come on, shout glory. <laughs> is that not strange? I, sometimes you wish you could explain all this practicality of Christianity to everyone. It's so nice. It's so what? So nice. No matter where you find yourself, it's so nice. And it gives you a lot of hope. No matter what you find yourself in. A lot of confidence. It is the confidence that we have in him. That when we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. The confidence in the fact that God hears you. I know with no shadow of doubt that if I speak, whatever I say, God hears. Whether it manifests or it has not manifested, God has said. I know. Because some of the things I think about, he answers. So if God answers me when I think about something, when I speak, he doesn't hear. And he has different ways of answering. So when people tell me about his prayer, and all that, the way God responds are different ways. But when I say different ways, I'm not implying that when you see a car inscription. No, people say God even can respond to you when you see a car inscription. That if you do that, demons will, will deceive you. <laughs> or you see a signboard. Have you seen people say that? Even ministers say that. You see, that, that's, that's making Christianity sensible. Christianity begins So Christianity, can you amplify this? <laughs> Did I say something here? I said what? Christianity begins from the inside. You see, 
as part of our training, we hear God here. We hear. You, you, you see God inside and hear what he's telling you. It's not the signboard that you need. <laughs> it's because you thought about it. God, God wrote on the signboard for you that day. <laughs> if you do that, you will be deceived. How many of you have been doing that? Let me see your hand up so that I can flock you before you go. <laughs> flock me. Can you be a WCN member being learned, learning about the Holy Ghost every time? And be looking for what God has been written in an inscription behind some car. <laughs> uh, Lego. Is it working now? Shout glory. glory. Who heard something there? Amen. 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 Is that not powerful? powerful? So make your Christianity practical. Talk to God. Talk to God often. Talk to God always. Talk to him. When you go home, say, Holy Ghost, talk to me. It's not by impartation that the Holy Ghost talks to you. Is it by impartation? Tell the Holy, Holy Ghost, talk to you. Some of us, until we heard the Holy Ghost speak to us, we were not eating. Not because if we eat, the Holy Ghost can't speak. But because we wanted to create that atmosphere. You want to, you want to, you see, you want, you want to be so charged because the Holy Ghost is not like this. He speaks. He speaks more often. You are the ones who are distracted by our wives, our husbands, our children, food, friends, phone, TV. Then we don't hear. So it's that distraction, D-I-S, in the world. The distraction. So sometimes you you, you, you have to separate yourself from the distraction. Sometimes you have to just separate yourself just to hear God speak to you. You hear that child, glory. Glory. The first time I saw the Holy Ghost in person or the similitude of the Holy Ghost in person, I was in the three days. I never forget it in person standing before me in person it was many years ago in person I was in a three day fasting with no water in person so and I was where I was even if you were whatever you can't enter there I was hiding that time and that experience I couldn't I, I can't explain it. I couldn't control myself. That was, a, that was one of the, the days I got to know that there are certain things inside of us eh, that when they are unleashed and you are not trained to handle, to handle it well, by the time we check you are on the streets running, we will think you you be there for three. Because sometimes there are certain, that, that, I, want to say, I want to say fires, there are certain fires of the spirit that, that are so strong that they, you can't explain, you can't explain that. Come on, shout glory. glory. But it's very powerful. It's very powerful. It's very powerful. Say it's powerful, sir, it's powerful. Let me leave that. It looks like I'm going to some spirituality too much. Is that not it's okay. This one is okay. When I get some few of you who are very serious, I'll share certain things with you. That is, if I see that you are very serious. Okay, so we said what? We speak to God. Is that true? Did I say that? Yes, sir. Are you in church? Yes, sir. I want to explain how you should speak to God often. You should be, you should be a walking, a walking what? A walking what? Walking talker. Charged charge everywhere. Sometimes you walk out of your room and, and we be speaking and talking. You may even be living in a compound house or whatever. Pray! Let, I've said it before. Oh, I've said a lot of things before. Maybe I should say them again. Now, if you are living in an area and they don't know you for prayers, they can't identify speaking in tongues, loud tongues, then there's a problem. Let your neighbor hear. He may say that you are making noise, but one day he will come to you. 
when the trouble is too much for him, you say, I call we call bomb pie, my uncle Yanko can't tell no cover bomb. So they will just tell you the chalaya bomb pie tie with chain himself the open pie. In the same area. How have you know what I'm talking about? Or you are in some apartment or whatever you are staying. Make your neighbors know you, you are with the Holy Ghost in that room. Don't let them know you for uh, Shatawale songs. You see, and all those songs, they know you for that. As you close on that, you just go, 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 go. We close from church Sunday evening. It's go, 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 go. They identify a telenovela with you. Is that not true? <laughs> if Papa is talking, say glory. glory. But who understood what I just shared briefly? It's very important. Pray. Pray. Talk to God. Talk to God. Be talking to God. Talking to God. We all need, to me, I feel we all need to be strengthened every time. We all need to be strengthened every time by the Holy Ghost. So we all need to be strengthened every time. Because of the distractions in the world. The things that we see and we hear. <laughs> Is that not true? And the things that comes into our mind as a result of what we see and hear on a daily basis. Is that true? So we all need to be strengthened. We all need to be aflame. See, we all need to be aflame. We are on fire. Shout glory. glory. Dog, did you hear something out of that? It looks like Dr. Sandra has been missing for a while. Is that not true? Number two, speak to yourself. Ephesians chapter 5 from verse 18 to 20. So I said that you are what? You are tonguing to God. You are tonguing to yourself. You are tonguing to God. They speak to yourself. You can put tongue in there. It has to do with speaking. Tonguing. Speaking. Amen. Amen. Speak to yourself. Ephesians chapter 5, from verse 18 to 20. Amen. Amen. And be not drunk with wine. Wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Is that not powerful? Be filled with the Spirit. Uh huh. There's a, there's a, there's a word, semicolon. Speaking to yourselves in Psalms. Have you realized that when I preach nowadays, I don't work plenty? Because yes. I want you to hear all that I'm sharing with you. These are important truths. The day I leave this country, you won't see me again. <laughs> These are truths you must keep till this else comes. <laughs> he said what? <laughs> Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Singing and making. There will be a time. The access we have now may not be like that. There will be a time. There will be a time. There will be a time. You don't have all the access you have now every day. Papa, oh, Papa, I have, I have a question. Uh, oh, no, no, no. We are finished dealing with you. We will have, might have even finished dealing with Ghana. Is that not true, Brother Anna? What do you think? As I don't play with all the things we put on the internet and they put this thing, they just let it be there. Now, one day, one day, another, all of you here will not be pastors in Ghana, you'll be somewhere else. Is that not true? Those, those who have come in Ghana will be. Will be, will be copying the message to preach on Sundays. Be, some will be in Kazakhstan. Some will, too will be in the USA. So speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Singing. I wonder sometimes when somebody sits under this teaching for some years and have the opportunity sometimes to leave this country, maybe go to the USA to start life there and such people are able to cut themselves off this ministry. Is it not strange? Speaking to yourselves in Psalms <laughs> and hymns. So it says that, be filled with the Spirit. Does it say that? Verse 18. Verse 18. 
And be not drunk with wine, wine is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. But it's not amazing too. Even Jesus had Judas. Is that not true? With all the teachings Jesus had and the miracles Jesus did, Jesus was sitting down. When the water turned to wine, he tasted some. Said, hey. and, and Demas, after following the whole great man of God, Paul, Demas still forsook Paul and went into the world. After traveling with Paul, the whole Paul, the Paul who's, who Apron says, I've, I've fully preached, I've fully demonstrated the signs of an apostle. That's what Paul said. Somebody who was preaching and somebody died and, and fell from it, like the story about the up, 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 everything up there. When you get out, just look at it. And the person falls from up down. Then the man of God leaves the room and goes back to just lie, lay on the person. The person wakes back to life. If, if you, and con, came back to continue the teaching. The all night was not a prayer all night. Today we don't even have word all night. People who sleep throughout. Just like Eutychus. He slept and fell. So we say we are having a word all night here. You'll be shocked how people will sleep. But Paul had the word on. He preached all night. He was preaching all night. The people were there hearing. And one of them was asleep. In fact, maybe others two were sleeping. And the guy fell. And he went to raise the guy back to life and came to continue his preaching. It didn't end because the guy died of sleeping. No, no, no. He continued. If you walk with such great man of God and you still forsake him to enter the world, then... It is no strange. Is it strange? No. And be not drunk with wine. Wine is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. I'm filled with the Spirit. Yeah. How can you be continually filled with the Spirit? You speak in tongues. And it gives its acts up. It says that what? Speaking to yourselves. Is it there? Verse 19, quickly. Speaking to yourselves. So I speak to myself. I, speak to myself. I know many motivational speakers say speak to yourself. You can make it. You can make it. Tell yourself when you wake up. I've ever been attending some of those motivational, uh, what well, you can pay money. So say those on campuses, you pay money for motivational. Have you ever did that? If you did that, let me see your hand up. You, you, you paid for motivational speaker. You came to sit down. You paid money. How much have you paid me for saying all these things I've told you now? <laughs> I never did it. Never. Never. <laughs> Hey. You are coming to motivate me. Um, I have to even pay money along, uh, after, uh, after that and get a certificate for attending a motivational uh, talk. <laughs> there are things in this world. Speaking to yourself in Psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. So you learn to speak to yourself. But it says you speak to yourselves. That is you... When you say speaking to yourselves, it doesn't mean that I speaking to you, you speaking to me. It is you speaking to your own self. Then it says, speak in psalms. In psalms, the Lord is my shepherd. I sh-. You wake up from the bed. You've not spoken in tongues. Do you understand what I'm talking about? You are wearing your suit to go to work. To go to work. So here do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil. For you are with me. You are in me. Glory. Glory. That is speaking to yourself in Psalms. You are in the car. You have certain thoughts coming. You say, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? You went to a funeral ground. They say, Charlie, we fear all the air. Do you get what I'm talking about? You attend a funeral at uh, where? Mention any name. Where? Adam. And you attend a funeral there, or you go for a a meeting, whatever it is, gathering, family day, whatever it is. Then you wake up, or you are not even asleep. You are just sitting down. You are listening to one Papa Peace message. Do you get what I'm talking about? See, those things build that atmosphere. That's why we say listen to the word of God. Listen to the messages. They build that atmosphere. You become so charged. You begin to speak in tongues. Sometimes you add fastings like we are doing in May. From tomorrow we are fasting. Yes, sir. And everyone is fasting. Yes, 
Everyone. Don't say it's for those five people. Everyone is fasting. I said what? Everyone is fasting. To six o'clock. The whole month of May we are fasting. And we are praying every night. We are praying how? Every night. Every night. The world, you see how the world is changing quickly. And some of you are complaining about fuel, fuel, fuel. And some are saying it's from Russia. When we started December, did you see any Russia fight? Huh? The world is changing. And many, many bad things are happening. See, and we as Christians must be different. In the midst of all, you can't be different just saying, well, I'll be different. Even Papa says, oh. shout glory to that. So we are all joining in. How many of you will join in the fast? I was speaking to a man of God and he says that even when Muslims are asked to fast, they fast, if it's 30 days, they fast the whole 30 days. They don't see prophecy. Do they see prophecy? They don't, they don't see testimony. Do they see testimony? Have you ever seen a Muslim man testifying that after the fasting they did, God has done something big for them? Have you seen some before? If you have seen, lift up your hands and let me see. Or you heard it on TV. Let me see, lift up your hands, let me see. But they still fast. We have seen signs of God. We have seen, the Bible says he left us without a witness. That means he left us without a testimony. We've heard testimonies of some people. We've seen God at work in our lives. We've seen God at work in the lives of others. We know that this is God. He's so real in our own, what do we call it? But we say fast, I fasted for two days in that week. Christians. We were Muslim fasted for 40 days or 30 days. How many fast days? 30 days. Fast for 30 days. A Muslim fasted for 30 days. A Christian fast two times in the whole week, in the whole month. When do we declare fast? And, and, and relegate it to three pastors or four pastors. These pastors are the ones who have to fast for us. Let us leave. And snores on the, on the line. We are sleeping because I was so tired. I was so tired as I'm sleeping. The Muslim man may be tired like you. You wake up at night to eat. <laughs> Don't they eat at night? They break the fast at night or something like that. They sit, eat at four, five. No matter how tired, he will join. He will join. See, let me not go into that. I'm not trying to compare Christianity to Islam, but it looks like those who don't have the reality of God are more serious than those who have the reality of God. It says we, they have the form of godliness, yet they deny the power thereof. That's what we are seeing in the church. And it's so sometimes it pains some of us. Those of us whose prophetic is deep, it pains us. Our prophetic is not because of seeing your life. No. It's our ability to sense what's happening within the church. Sense you see that no, this is wrong in the church. Why would Christians be so like this? Maybe after you eat communion, you become serious this time. Did you hear what I said? Those times when I used to go out there to do dawn broadcast, and you're walking on the streets, you see Muslims at 4, is it 4 a.m. they pray? 4 a.m. I'm not talking about five Muslims. Let's say we are having a 4 a.m. prayer meeting here. You will see three people. Even in the churches of churches, you see few people. Is that not true? 4 a.m. You will be shocked. When you go and you are preaching, you are just preaching, you see, they start the song and all that, you will be shocked. And this thing, eh, they have to even do washings before. It's not like they just wake up and they enter their mosque. You see, they just wake up and st- and then they are going to mosque. They are going to do washings with their, uh, what do you call that thing? Huh? They do ablution and all that, those washings, washings. They will take their time to do the washings and enter the mosque to pray. And those of you who have mates who are Muslims and whatever who are Muslims, after they finish, they bath and go to their work. They don't go back to work, continue sleeping. But tell a Christian this. He will say, Papa, because of the time they gave me, when I close from work. I've said, I said, it looks like WCN is the only people that we have workers. We have workers in offices. All the other churches don't have. Because the things that some people do, when you look at it, it's like, ah. 
I just says, by the way. So we are praying and fasting. Are we praying and fasting? Yes, sir. The Muslim who has never heard God speak to him for him to say, it's true, sir, it's true, man. It's true. You have financial policy. It's true, it's true. Man of woman of God, it is true. How did the woman of God know you know financial policy? That is God speaking to the woman of God. God can speak to you, to you, to a woman of God for you to confirm that. Adiana, what I was really thinking about before I came. The practicality of the reality of God. Did I say something there? You say we are fasting and praying, you'll be eating what when you are sitting down, you are eating the while. You not are you not ashamed of yourself? That we are all fasting, you are sitting down eating your vim vim vim, eating what and stretching yourself. Hey. <laughs> Some of you are laughing. I'm talking to some people here. Yes, sir. I'm talking to those are even those are thoughts from demons. Okay, today cry is okay. Today don't fast. Papa is fasting. In the past days, they are praying. Even the mentality that I'm so tired. Sometimes and most of those mentalities are demonic mentality. I said it before, I said when you are fasting. And it is time to break the fast. And you've not eaten anything. And you realize that the food you like most, the water you like, is at, the, at Medina. With all your weakness on the floor from 6 o'clock to eight, you'll be able to walk, not take a throttle. <laughs> Am I talking practically? You will walk to Medina to go and get that water. <laughs> but before then, you'll be like today, the Today, today it looks like today it looks like all the demons are on me. I can't fast. The f- it's three o'clock and hey, it's now three. <laughs> Shout glory. Oh, glory. So they're speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns. Hymns are songs. Have you have some sing- your hymns you want to sing for us now? <laughs> <laughs> he has been from the faith. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and hymns. I need no other argument. I don't know what hymns. I need no. Uh, but I like, I like your suggestion. I don't know how to sing it. <laughs> So when you are filled with the spirit, you sing hymns. You sing hymns. No wonder we have the Methodist and Presby and what the Catholics with all those hymns. It's very powerful. Some of the songs are very, very, very spiritual. The Wesley, the Wesley Charles Wesley wrote a lot of hymns. They're very spiritual. Very spiritual. Those men were men that we are yet to see in this generation men who travel on on the back of horses to preach the gospel and are sick and are on the horses in their sick state to preach they will prefer dying on the horse than being in the hospital to be free those are men who knew god as god i read the story of a man who went to india and was chased went to india and all of that they were wanted to kill he preached the best he to the point where he went blind and all that and still stayed there to preach with all his blindness and his wife was with him. I read another story about, uh, I've read a lot of things. I, I think I've read books more than all those people who are making noise about their doing masters or they did masters and all that. You see, about uh, a guy, a, a, a missionary was arrested and put in prison. Down. The prison was not like this time. Like we call it dungeon. Prison separated from the wife for about 30 years the wife had not seen him he was young when he came back he had become old the wife was also praying for those 30 years praying for the husband that is alive they, they finally met but he was in prison writing scripts and all that for about 30 years well i'll just forward that thing on there you read it you'll be shocked my head was shaking like that. i said ah, every day i go by boy why but what some people have, what people, some people saw. Today we have everything, see, internet. You can even be at home and be in church at home. 
Yet we also have a lot of distractions from Instagram and Snapchat. You must make a choice. Is that not true? When you see what people have gone through for the gospel, you shake yourself. So speaking hymns and spiritual songs. Spiritual songs like what? What song were you singing earlier on this affiliate? Songs of the Spirit. Not uh, coming to my heart and all that. Songs of the Spirit. Songs of the Spirit. The song you were singing, Songs of the Spirit. Amen. To yourself. Say to myself. To myself. And singing and making melody in your heart. You ever made melody in your heart before? Uh, those days when we used to wash a lot, we didn't have washing machine. When I, I didn't know any washing machine thing, I was personal. You had washing your own clothes, no relationship, nothing. Is that not strange? From the time I started a relationship with me, I never washed my clothes. So. Just relationship, not marriage. I never, those of you are single, single. You should learn those things. You should do LOF, you should do uh, for ladies. <laughs> When I say, you say, oh, Papa likes talking about us, ladies like that. Oh. There are certain things that you see that sometimes you can't tell, you can't talk. I wish God had given me that courage to always talk about things. Like he gave to mommy. We have to download from her. By this time, I would have said a lot of things, but I won't say it. <laughs> but it's very important, you know, when you are washing and then you are making melody in your heart. To the Lord, or you are cooking, you are making melody in your heart. I don't know how to cook. God didn't give me that grace. <laughs> See, or you, you are washing dishes, and you are making melodies in your heart. Sometimes it can't stay there; it comes out. Have you experienced that before? Yes, sir. I feel the spirit. Go to the next point. Who understood just this scripture? It's okay for you. Amen. The next one is what? Speak to things. Speak to things. I think I spent more time on the tongues. Eh? Speak to things. Mark chapter 11, verse 20 to 23. Well, the time I started a relationship with mommy, I never washed any clothes. As well, this is my witness. Are you not my witness? I'm your witness, sir. No clothes. You come and meet me washing my clothes for what? That's how powerful mommy is. Yeah. I didn't hear glory to that. Glory. Yeah. Yeah. I never washed my clothes. Hello. Never. From that time, when I was even on the bench, Oh, I wasn't washing my clothes on the bench. I was watching when I was in the, no relationship. When I entered the relationship, all my clothes would be carried away straight. As to how it is washed, it comes back uh, clean and I just wear. That is from relationship. I, I, I see, I, I, I grow best for if you are not part. What do you think? When, when, when a game will be interesting, it begins in the morning. <laughs> Direct translation. <laughs> Don't I share certain things, eh? Yes, but they are powerful. powerful we are families. So I have to talk to you. Amen. 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 We've talked to you. There are things you learn. That's why we were talking about marriage. There are things you begin to learn before you enter. You see. And one of those things is how to keep a home as a wife. I know you have friends who say, it's my husband who does all of that. I don't do it. And all that. Keep on comparing that to your friend. One day you hear that that friend whose husband used to do that, he has stopped doing it and has become an issue. At that time, you built your marriage on that your friend's own. <laughs> Come on, shout glory. glory. There are things that you learn. You learn. There are things that you learn. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. If there is something that I know about Mumi, is the fact that she's not selfish. Yes, You're putting everything. I'm not saying that because of her. I, I think I, I'm saying something. Maybe I'm saying something to you, but yes, you sir. don't know. Because yes, that's not what I'm teaching today. Am I teaching that today? Yes, that is it's because she's not selfish. You know, she's not selfish. Those days when she had a lot of money at that time, yeah, you have. I'm, I'm talking about those days. <laughs> I know she's loaded. I know she's loaded. I know she's loaded. 
he said, no, when she had more than me in the, in the physical. In the physical, in the physical. <laughs> Is that not true? Even in those days, she, she wouldn't say, I'm going to buy a wig of 1,000 Ghana and come and show it to me. Oh. <laughs> see, the, I said something to some people some time back. I said that when, when there is a walk, you have a walk with a person you're about to get married to for a period of time, you fought before, you've argued before, you've done all kinds of things before, you've also loved yourself before, and done all of that. After a period of time, the tendency to fight even ceases. There's a whole journey of, there's an experience. It's not like I met you to get married. We've experienced things. So when I'm talking some of these things, I'm talking to some of you. Yes, sir. So I feel that's not true. Don't you pamper your husband. Pamper your husband. So it's part of the whole system. Shout glory. glory. You say, why am I not talking to the men? Men, shall I talk to you now? Talking to us already, sir. <laughs> <laughs> speak to things. Mark 11, 20 to 23. Mark 11, 20 to 23. And in the morning, as they passed by, did I say something right now? Okay. Hello, if you guys should have a training, a meeting, not just to cook, a consensus some of these things. I think there's an experience that the young ones, young ladies who are not married, and even those who are married should have. Should have. Should have. It's very important. Your ability to supervise your own home, even as a, as a wife, is so important. Even if you have hundreds of house helps in uniform. Have you ever seen house helps in uniform before? I saw, I saw some ones at Laboni. I said, wow, so this is not in a movie. <laughs> Let me go to the last one and close. Amen. Last two and then close. Amen. And in the morning, about six different dresses, house helps. A big house. All this, all this, all this. I was, I was in the house, I was standing there watching all this. But this is not a Nigerian movie. Yeah. Even with that, you should be able to supervise your home. You should be able to supervise your home. It's very important. And in the morning, as they pass by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. Uh -huh. And Peter, how many are going to be speaking to yourselves yes, in Psalms? It's, a, it's not a preaching topic. Oh. Yes, it's a practical something. You wake up and you, you say, my heart is indicting a good matter. Ah, <laughs> yeah, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? That's one of my, my, my scriptures. I love it. And I love the John Wesley scripture in Psalms. I'm trying to look for that scripture. The scripture that they used to sing the song. That was John Wesley's favorite scripture. It's so powerful. I'll look for that scripture for you if you want to know. Or you put a seed here. And Peter calling to remember said unto him, Master, behold, the fig tree which thou cursed is withered away. Uh huh. And Jesus answering said unto them, Have faith in God. Verse 23. So Jesus is a, 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 a story of Jesus cursing the fig tree and it dried. And verily, Jesus said, Verily, I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he said shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he said. Did you see that? So this has to do with saying to things. Whosoever shall say unto this mountain. So in Christianity also, we tongue to things. We do things tonguing. I said things. They say we don't say it like that. So we, we do what? Tonguing. Things tonguing. That means that you speak to things. You must learn to speak to things. Amen. Amen. You speak to situations. You learn to speak to your food. 
You learn to speak to your shoes. You learn to speak to your car. How many of you have spoken to your car before? <laughs> Amen. Some people say, Papa, I bought my car so that you pull over it and do the dedication. Dedicate the car. <laughs> those are church practices. They are church practices. <laughs> now, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, so is that clear? Take us to look quickly. I don't want to explain this. I've, I think I've explained this enough. You have to learn to speak to things. Amen. Amen. You have to speak to your land. You go to the next land, the next rice land. You say, Land, go rice. Even though you've put the seeds there, you say, Go rice. God can make a rice grow without a seed. But God too can, based on what you said, cause that those seeds you've planted to, to multiply. That's why we say, God, with God, nothing is impossible. Whether it is like this or like that, it's still impossible. Come on, shout glory. But you must speak to the land. It's a grow land. No losses. Land, did you hear? Uh, you can do just a one-hour walk there. Two hours. Two hours. <laughs> and speak. Did you hear what I said? You put your money on that thing. It's thousand Ghana. I say, you, you never finish. I, uh, multiply. <laughs> multiply. God can give you a bigger job based on that. Or cause somebody to bring you money based on us to... Do you get what I'm talking about? Yes, uh -huh. it. So it's not like when I say it, maybe it, God can even cause that same money to be multiplying. Instantly. Instantly. Yes, By the time you remove thousand Ghana, you go again and it's thousand Ghana. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's what happened with the loaves. So it's possible that the Spirit of God can make that happen. And that's what I want. Yes, that's what me, I want. Yes, I don't push that on you. You may not want that. I want you to do that. I wish I could just speak to my politics. Everybody say, be full and never be empty. Then you go and sleep. It never gets empty until you are ready to go to heaven. Is that not strange? But by the time, by the time we, are, we are going to, some of us, we are ready to go to heaven, there are a lot of things we have spoken that are still speaking for others. The polytank water is never what is never finishing. We have gone. You're fooled like that. <laughs> That's what me I like. I'm not saying look like it like me. I like it like me. <laughs> I like it like me. <laughs> Come on, shout glory. But begin to do that now. Speak to things. You may not have the results I just spoke about concerning that, but you have other avenues through which God can cause the same thing to happen based on your proportion of revelation and faith. Come on, shout glory. glory. So learn to speak to things. This month you'll be speaking to things. Yes, so it means that this month you'll be doing what? You'll be praying, right? Yes, sir. Speaking to God. Okay. So if next week Sunday I come and I say that, what did God tell you within the whole week? And you have nothing to say, or you go and conjure something, I'll catch you here. How many understand what I'm saying? This month we must be more spiritual. See, fasting is not fasting is not easy. So you don't fast for fasting sake. Don't fast for fasting. Your Christianity must go to another level. Once you fast and you pray and you sing hymns and spiritual songs and melodies. Sometimes certain melodies encourages you. A certain songs that just come in your heart, they encourage you at once. They wake you up. Sometimes there are songs that even remind you of a prophecy you received many years ago. How many of you know that? Is that true? Then you also speak to things. This month, you'll be, how many of you will be speaking to things? You'll be speaking to things. Some of you must go and speak to your car. Your car you bought is Ghana used car. Speak to that car. The next car must be either tier rubber or home use, depending on the level you are climbing. You see, but you can stretch yourself and you pray and you are speaking. Do you get what I'm talking about? Speak to the car. The next one will be a car you are buying for a, 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 a member of the church. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Is that not true? Yes, sir. Speak. Some of you, you put your certificates down. The certificate has not yielded results enough. <laughs> when you look at you studying all the way from class one to this one, next, come in, I will if you are calculating the number of schools you have paid, oh, boka. <laughs> Is that not true? It's very true. Put that certificate down and say, hey, you've not produced results enough. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Amen. You know, a, 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 a situation happened within this week that I want to talk to you about. 
I was talking to someone and the person said, said something about death. About death. Whilst I was talking to the person. And after the conversation, that's what I'm telling you. These are all, I'm, 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 I'm building your character. You, see. you must learn to speak to things. Many years ago, we used to say, learn a uh, practice speaking sessions. You, see, you practice a speaking session. You sit down, put a chair in the corner somewhere. And sometimes, I like to off the light a lot. I don't know, I'm here to find out why. Mm-hmm. You off all the lights. When you off all the lights, you don't see anything again. Even when the cockroach is passed, you don't see the cockroach. You now say, I'm going to kill the cockroach and continue. <laughs> you off all your lights there. That is not a aquanchere, please. <laughs> It's not a doctrine. It's like closing your eyes. People ask, do we have to close your eyes when we pray? It's just to avoid distractions. Let's avoid distractions. You can open your eyes and pray. In fact, you must even be opening your eyes and pray. The more you open your eyes, the more you see more. <laughs> Shout glory. Hey. Mr. Vanessa, will you do that? You see, so it's very important. Then you sit and you speak. Speak, I declare in the name of the Lord Jesus. I declare over my husband. I declare over my children. I speak over my this. I speak over my husband's job. I speak over my own. I speak to you, Job. You understand? You are speaking like you are speaking to a person. Because that's how God lives. That's how Jesus lived. Jesus spoke to three. It was three a person. Three is what he has said. Does a tree have an ear? And he spoke to it. So we learn that too from him. We also speak. I've said it before that can a dead person hear you, your voice? But you speak to a dead person. You speak to a dead thing. You're incurring losses too much. You begin to speak in the name of this month. You will do that. Who will do that? Do that. And then, okay, I think this is okay. You can add this scripture to it because of our time. Luke chapter 17, verse 6 to this scripture. Just add it. Then you also speak to others. Say, speak to others. Speak to others. Colossians. Let's go to Psalm 45, verse 1. I'm reading two scriptures on that. Speaking to others has to do with how you talk to others. That's not about just a, I'm going to sit down with a, we are, we are here and go concern and all that. But you are speaking, you are, you are tonguing to others. Amen. If you have been blessed, give me a shout of glory. glory. It looks like a simple teaching, right? Is it a simple teaching? Yes, sir. So Psalm 45, verse 1. My heart is indicting a good, mat- a good matter. I speak of the things which I have made touching the king. Sometimes you have to even speak to things, including demons. Yes, Some demonic thoughts. What do you say? Clear off. No. That thoughts that say this business won't prosper. It comes into your ah, it comes to your it's clear off. Say it after me, say clear off. Clear off. Or certain kinds of you may never get my in the name of Jesus. Do you do that? <laughs> you speak to demons. Sometimes you speak to demons. Every demonic orchestration over this atmosphere, this home. You are speaking to things, including demons. So write it, including demons. Because if I leave demons out, you won't speak. Speak to demons, let them run away. The more you do that, the more they will become scared of you. You, see, you speak to demons. I break every influence of demons over my car. You can't have an accident. I can't have the wrong driver. I can't have the wrong this. You speak, declare. You mean when the car is in the wrong hands, you still not have an accident. Is that not true? Yes, For some reason, the cow pass here. Come on, lift up and shout glory to that. Glory. How you have been speaking to demons? If you have spoken to demons, let me see. You have not started, start now. And some of you, to the demons, cry, they won't fall for a victory. You don't even have, you just sleep. Says, whom resist steadfast in the faith. Amen. Amen. How do you resist the demons steadfast in the faith? You speak, come on. Come out of this place. Say that. Come out of this. Come out of this marriage. 
<laughs> speak to others. So it says, my heart is indicting a good matter. I speak of the things which I have made touching the king. My tongue is the pen of a ready writer. So we write with our tongues. Write that one down. We write with our tongues. Amen. And all of you are already tired. Come on, shout glory. glory. We write with our tongues. With our, with our tongue. The psalm and then Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29 to 31. Have you written that down? I think James chapter 1, verse 8. I think last year we talked about James. Is that, is that true? And First Peter chapter 3, verse 10. Why are we offline? First Peter chapter 3. First Peter chapter 3, verse 10. Amen. Have you gotten that scripture there? It all has to do with, I think last year we talked about that, right? So you can go back and get that message on the speaking spirit. Is it on the speaking spirit? Okay, this time we're talking about the tongue in Christian. Amen. So get that. This has to do with how to respond to your neighbor. She says, let your conversation be seasoned with salt on how to answer, that you may know how to answer Every man. See, for he that love, love and seek with let him refrain his tongue from evil. This is also a training. This is a training. That you must train yourself with. Refrain your tongue from speaking evil. There are people who always speak evil continually. See? And his lips that they speak no guile. Shout glory. glory. Shall we please be upstanding? Glory. Have you heard something today? Have you heard something today? Yeah, so we are declaring the month of May. Are we in the month of May already? We are declaring the month of what? We are declaring the month of tonguing. Tonguing. We are going to be speaking in tongues. We are going to be tonguing in tongues. Is that true? I didn't hear glory to that. We'll be tonguing to ourselves. We'll be tonguing to things. And we'll be tonguing to what? One another. Amen. We will be speaking. And so in these times where we are going to be praying and all that, make sure you are speaking. Sometimes, I, I, When I talked about waging war with prophecies, I talked about it. You pick prophecies and wage war. During these times. If you eat and drink, and know the wala or... There's a kind of eating and drinking because the journey is far. Come on, shout glory. Can we have the communion right now? Can we just just give it give you can just distribute the communion? Just give us a, a song and then Thank you, Jesus. Shada Bahasa. Manda Shata Laka I thank you for that blood, precious Jesus. I thank you for your body broken for me. Oh. I remember how you died for me in your perfect sacrifice and victory. I remember all you done for me, oh my Lord, and I worship you today. I I thank you. I thank you the blood. Precious Jesus, Jesus. Oh, I thank you. For your body broken for me. So you can pause here. 
Luke chapter 22. You can pause eh? and we continue. Luke chapter 22, verse 19. Can we just project that as we hold the bread? Luke chapter 22, verse 19. I have a message. I have many messages to teach on communion, but I don't know why I don't teach them at all. Amen. And he took bread and gave thanks and break it and gave unto them, saying, This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Can we all break the bread? Verse 20. Can we take the wine? Likewise also the cup after the supper saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood which is shed for you. You can also drink the wine. And victory. I remember all you've done. And also, for our, our, me, our kids oh my God, and I worship, worship you, you today. today. I worship you today. I remember, I, I remember. remember. For me, your perfect sacrifice, your perfect sacrifice and victory. I remember, I remember all you've done for me. Oh my God, and I worship you today. I worship you, Lord. Just thank the Lord wherever you are. Just thank Him. For today. today, thank you for this month. I As we are beginning a new month, just thank the Lord for this for month me. of May. In the name of Jesus, that you be daily loaded with benefits within this month spiritual benefits, and material benefits, and financial benefits within this month of May. In the name of Jesus. Just lift up your words wherever you are and just thank and worship his name. Just pray in the Holy Ghost. Shata Kappa. Even as we sing this song, just pray in the Holy Ghost. Jesus, precious Jesus. Precious Jesus, he says, I thank you, I thank you for your body broken for me. Thank you, Jesus. I remember, I remember all you done for me, your perfect I remember, I remember all you've done for me, oh my God, and I worship you today, I worship you, Lord, I worship you today. Your perfect sacrifice, your perfect sacrifice, and victory. We remember, we remember all you've done for me, oh my God, and I worship you today. We worship. 
worship you, Lord. Worship you today. Hallelujah. Wherever you just lift up your hand. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus. Thank you for your sacrifice. Thank you for your broken body. Thank you for the New Testament in your blood. And thank you for making us able ministers of the New Testament. Not of the letter. For the letter kill it. But of the spirit. And the spirit give it life. We thank you, Lord. We love you, Jesus. There is none like you. We thank you. Thank you for this month of May. Thank you for the great things you are going to be seen in this month. We bless your name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now say this after me. Say the life of God is at work in my body. Divine health is at work in my flesh. In my blood. In my bones. In my organs. In my systems. I reject sicknesses and diseases. I refuse to be sick. I refuse to be weak. I refuse to die. In the name of Jesus. I'm walking in life. I'm walking in life. My body is quickened in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In my life, in my path, there is no death. Say, death is not permitted around me. Corruption is not permitted around me. In the name of Jesus. I live in an environment of life. I supply life into my environment. In the name of Jesus, I refuse to age. I refuse to grow old. I'm youthing in the name of Jesus. My body is renewed in life on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, on a monthly basis. In the name of Jesus, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus is at work in my spirit. Is at work in my body. Is at work in my finances. Is at work in my marriage. Is at work in my children. In the name of Jesus. Say thank you, Holy Ghost. We live in you. Come on, shout glory. Shall we give our offerings and then? Amen. You are great God, Almighty Jesus. What a great God you are. What a great God you are. You are holy, say you are holy. So righteous, magnificent. What a great God. What a great God you are. You are, you are, you are great God. You are great God. Almighty Jesus. What a great God you are. What a great God you are. Oh, you are so holy. You are holy. So righteous. Magnificent. What a great God you are. What a great God. You are good, you are good, you are good, you are good. You are kind, you are great. Precious Jesus. What a great God. Oh, you are good, you are good, so good. You are good. You are kind, you are. 